Hey there folks, and uh, uh, this is just a little thing just to say I'm starting off this series which is about uh, Trump, uh, but of course this is global astrology so it's also by extension about America, and I just wanted to say that this of course is a map of America, but I visited America in 2019, it was my fourth visit, um, but I had a decade of uh, space in between. So I went three times in quite quite close succession. That's Trump's chart just kind of jumping in. And then um, and then there was I had a gap of 10 years and then I went again. But this time I went all the way around. So you can see here I literally went all the way around America. So, of course, it is quite unusual for British um, astrologer to be focusing quite so much on the states but it is a uh, a place that I do know uh, well also as well my grandfather was American and that was part of my uh, visit to America last year sadly he passed away in uh, Easter 2019 and this was part of me going there and I did a pilgrimage she was originally uh, from Atlanta Georgia taught up in New York and I was also doing research at the time for a uh, novel and I went all the way around the United States, uh, passed through 22 states and visited 11. So uh, I just wanted you to know so that when when I do comment about Trump uh, and about America, I do understand that this is only for entertainment purposes only. Um, however, this is someone that has visited America quite a lot and has been to a lot of those uh, places uh, on many occasions. It is an incredible country. It's got some amazing stuff going on, but this is a challenging period uh, for America, so this is why it's pertinent to talk about it now, and uh, and it was a real adventure. So there we are. I'll just drop tr Trump's chart back there, and welcome to the series. Okay, hello everyone and uh, welcome to Hogarth's Global Astrology. Know your nation, know yourself. And uh, today um, I'm basically, look, there's a lot going on in the world right now as we see, particularly in America. And it is just getting so continually, continually strange and unusual um, and of course, I mean, after all, I mean, this is about global astrology. Now, of course, there's lots of stuff going on in the rest of the world. But again, I think we have to talk about America as the scenario is getting more and more bizarre, basically. So let's kind of start. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, this is the launch of a new mini series, and it is about Donald Trump. Now, why am I doing that? That might seem like an obvious thing, but in truth and honesty, this is this is Donald Trump's uh, chart here. This is his chart. And it is filled with dramatic stuff, um, stuff that is worthy of uh, a dynasty um, <laughs> series, let alone episode. Um, and the thing is, is that one of the things that we really need to talk about and what this uh, this uh, series is going to be about. And it's going to be I think I'm going to do I'm going to do four episodes. And this episode is called Trump's Tragic Moon. Yeah. Trump's Tragic Tragic Moon Tantrums and Mummy Issues. Now, um, you might think, oh, my gosh, that is quite a dramatic thing to say, but it truly is the case. And the reason why this is important and why I want to do this video, on one hand, uh, we need to remember, of course, this is entertainment. You know, um, at the end of the day, you know, uh, you know, I'm an astrologer and uh, I am describing phenomena. So this is not some kind of legal kind of statement or anything um, like that. And I'm just uh, just putting that caveat out to start with. But according to the rules of astrology, Trump's moon is truly compelling. And it's actually very surprising and it is 
highly unusual. Now, this may not shock many people because, of course, you know, that makes sense. But there are many people that um, may not be familiar with the principles of astrology and uh, particularly uh, Vedic astrology, which is what I practice, um, although the Western astrology is still valid. Um, but Indian Vedic astrology really begins to drill down into why circumstances and people are as they are right so now that now that i've said that let's get stuck in now i'm going to be dividing this this up so we're going to be looking initially at trump's uh, moon and the moon reflects our memories um our mind um our childhood experiences um how we instinctually respond to any given situation without thinking yeah uh, but also very importantly the moon also represents the mother so when you look at the moon in someone's chart you are not only looking at that person's mind their instinctive response uh, responses and their memories and just the general things that they're thinking about you're also looking at the mother as well so this is why this is so important now, as we understand, uh, part of what inspired this, we have um, Trump's niece, Mary Trump, who is doing the rounds with her Expose All uh, book about Trump's character and some of the difficulties in that character. And she's uh, made explicit references to his state of mind. Now, what I wanted to do with, 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 with this series, which is going to be a, a four part series where I focus on um, a specific part of Trump's life. So this is very much his very early days, his uh, early childhood uh, with uh, and his relationship essentially with his mother, which is one of the most important relationships that all of us as human beings have. As we know, father, of course, is extremely important, but the mother is essential so um so there's that and then the uh the next part of the series series four i mean sorry series uh, episode two will be kind of looking at uh trump's money yeah trump's money we're going to be looking at the second house here we're starting here in the fourth house but then we're going to be going looking at the second house his money and his upbringing and then for episode three, we're going to be looking at Trump's career, which is the 10th house over here, which has got the sun, Rahu and uh, planet Uranus. Again, very significant. And then episode four, we're going to be looking at Trump's 12th house. And that is actually going to be looking at the potential downfall of Trump, actually, um, and where his presidency is likely to end. And because, again, he's such an extraordinary character, irrespective of whether you like the guy or not, he, he is just completely over the top. And all of that is in the chart. But first things first, let's start with uh, with this with this relationship and let's start talking about Trump's moon and why it's so important. So let me just have a little slurp. And I'm going to try and keep this video short, uh, le less than half an hour, um, hopefully maybe about 15 minutes. Right. So let's get in. So here we are. This is Trump's chart. This is house number one where we see the ascendant. Um, we've got it. Trump is a Leo ascendant. As we know, Leos tend to be quite flamboyant. Point, case in point, <laughs> I've got a lot of Leo in my chart. Um, but when you've got Mars in the first house, uh, that adds even more energy and uh, chutzpah to the, the, to the persona. Um, and you'll see that Mars has an aspect here to the moon. Right. So the moon, the mind the mother, our instinctive uh, habitual habits, uh, our talents, um, our ways that we respond to people. They say the moon is the soil in which the soul grows up in. Now, one of the most important things to know about, about Trump's chart, and I'll make sure that I keep my uh, notes open as well, is that there is a lot going on with this moon. Now, you might think this is quite a simple diagram, but there's there's actually quite a lot to it. 
First of all, Trumpy was born on an eclipse. Yes, Trump was born on an eclipse. And this is very, very important because an eclipse, when someone's born on an eclipse, what happens is that person effectively becomes a bit like a walking eclipse. They have this ability for good or for ill to basically completely eclipse people. I know that seems seems really obvious, but just think about it. Um, the sun and the moon are the two brightest objects in the sky or planets, as we, as we would say in um, Vedic astrology. And an eclipse is the shadow of the nodes of the moon. Rahu, the north node, and Ketu, the south node. Now, I've spoken in other videos about the nature of, of the eclipses, but essentially Rahu and Ketu are malefic in the sense they're malefic in nature, in a the sense they tend to be rather cruel in nature, but they can also give incredible results and real extremes. They are the rebels of the zodiac, but they are the only ones that can eclipse the sun and moon in the chart because the sun and the moon are, mo are the most powerful and the brightest planets and therefore the most important in terms of when we're talking about Jyotish, which means the science of light. So these are these shadow points, the shadow points in the chart. Wherever Rahu falls, this is the direction in life that we're supposed to be going into. So for uh, Donald Trump, Rahu falls in his 10th house. So this was a man who was destined to have a public life, yeah? A very kind of striking or dramatic career in some way. And then Ketu here represents, um, this represents um, things that we've conquered in the past. Ketu is the castle of our chart. This is our past life talents, abilities, uh, abilities that we've had. But uh, Ketu is also dissatisfaction. It's criticism. Um, it's the parts of our, it's the parts where we just think, ah, eh, I've done this, I've done that, I'm not interested. Um, but yet there's a lot of talent that is also in the South Node as well. Now, there is something funny that happens, which is when what we have here, we have Ketu with the moon. This is very significant. Have a little slurp. Because when Ketu is with the moon, what, what Ketu is like, Ketu is like a little black hole, yeah? Wherever it is in the chart, it, there is this feeling that there is not enough, yeah? There's this feeling that there is not enough, that, that um, there is some kind of dryness, some kind of emptiness there, some kind of something that we, that we want to fill. So, for example, when people have Ketu in the second house, they, um, they feel they never have quite enough money for example, or they weren't quite nurtured enough for it, you know, so, something like that, where they feel that they want to put that energy in. Now, this is not always a bad thing, because it is sometimes good to put uh, our energy in, into stuff. And, you know, a lot of us, if we put our energy into wealth and, you know, developing things like that, then, of course, we get better at that aspect of life. So Ketu, although very critical, is also quite strategic, quite mathematical. And also acts like in the nature of Mars, yeah? It's similar to Mars in its energy, so it can be very intense. It can be very deep, and it can almost be very kind of scorpionic in nature. So when it's with the moon, it basically oversensitizes the moon. And as, as, like I said, Ketu can be like a little black hole, if the moon represents the mind, it can suggest that there's almost like a hole in the mind that always wants to be filled. What this can show is, is that Donald Trump is always thinking, always his mind is churning, ticking over, ticking over, ticking over, ticking over, ticking over, ticking over. Also as well, when Ketu is with the moon, it can affect the sleep patterns as well. And what's one of the things that we know a lot about Trump is that he's often up into the small hours of the morning tweeting away, isn't he? He's always tweeting away, looking at stuff uh, and often doing what? Criticising stuff. 
is very critical, isn't he? He will just call out this and that and be very striking and be very kind of um, uh, verbal in his criticisms of people. Have you noticed that? Of course, we all, we've all noticed that. Not only that, as well, you'll see here there is no planet before or after the moon. Although the moon is with Ketu, Ketu doesn't count. Ketu and Rahu don't count because they're not physically embodied planets. And if actually we see there's really is quite a big distance between, you know, the moon and the planets afterwards. I mean, we've got a whole sign here and then we've got one, two, three, four, five, you know, basically five houses go by before uh, the moon um, has anything. So <clears throat> it's got it's got the opposition. But what this means, what is this referred to? This is referred to as Kema Drama Moon. And it's basically, it means that the moon is isolated because it doesn't have any company. It's not, it's not completely ignored because, of course, it does have the opposition from the sun. However, this moon is very lonely. Now, this is actually quite common, um, and I've seen this as well for, for, for my clients. But what this can do is this can give a feeling of loneliness and isolation in childhood. Now, this is very this is very relevant. Because anyone who's watched the interviews with Mary Trump, what's one of the main things that she said? She said that basically Trump's mother suffered quite a lot from mental ill health. And this can also be an aspect as well of what of what Ketu can do. It can trouble the mind. Yeah, so this can also show the mother, the moon, had issues with her mind. And approximately around, uh, according to Mary Trump, when Trump, uh, when Donald Trump was around about two slash three years old, his mother had a mental episode. This happens, can happen to any of us in life, as, as we know. But she had to be institutionalized and they were separated. Now, when it comes to the development of the mind and the consciousness, which again, the moon represents, the first eight years of life are the most crucial if you have a separation from your mother or your main caregiver or whoever is the main supplier of that nurturing side in your life, in that age, this really affects the psyche. So Ketu is also um, a separating force as well. He also uh, Ketu uh, refers to sharp objects like knives or scissors and stuff like that or cuts being separated away. So there was a time literally where Trump was separated from his mother because she had these severe mental issues, which in turn would have affected his own mind and his own development. And this is what these this is what these energies um, are showing. So he had this chemo chemo drama moon. Now, we all, you know, eventually people usually, you know, become adults and stuff like that and they learn how to kind of uh, maybe deal with those feelings of isolation but they never completely go and especially in in this case with trump you know th this is actually quite a strong one because of these aspects that the moon is getting so the moon is effectively being aspected by four malefics it has the malefic aspect of being with ketu it has the malefic aspect of mars it has the malefic aspect of Rahu and the mildly malefic aspect of the sun. Now, the sun is a mild malefic. Two of those aspects are friendly in terms of friendship with the moon. One there is the sun, which effectively is the moon's husband. So we're looking at king and queen. Sun is king. Uh, moon is queen. So that is not necessarily a negative aspect. And in fact, this is probably actually a really helpful one. And I'll explain why. Mars is also a friend. But Mars is energy. Yeah, Mars is energy. And wherever Mars aspects, he puts his energy into that thing for good or bad. So what this does is this speeds up, energizes that moon. 
does power that moon, but it also kind of agitates and stirs up Ketu as well, making that mind race even faster. And it also adds to the aggression as well, because Mars is passion and it's aggression. It's also sex drive. It's also sport, um, but it's also war and it's also conflict. So it's very important to see where Mars aspects in a person's chart. So we see here, this is adding a kind of almost like a harshness an intensity uh, there to this already quite difficult aspect. So there's that. Another, another um, aspect uh, of this moon as well is that it is debilitated. The moon is considered debilitated in the sign of Scorpio, which is where, which is where Trump's moon is. And also here, you see here, this says AL, and that means Aruda Lagna. And it's like an alternative ascendant. So in many ways, although Trump is technically a Leo, he really comes across like quite an intense Scorpio. Yeah, quite an intense Scorpio. He has this Scorpionic side to him. Why is the moon debilitated in Scorpio? It's because Scorpio is the sign of insecurity. And it refers to the genital area in terms of the body. And there are no bones in that area. The moon is exalted in Taurus, which is uh, stability, security, tangible assets and wealth. Yeah. Food, um, survival, family, all of those things. The moon is exalted there, but it's debilitated in Scorpio because the moon doesn't feel secure there. Now, it's not the end of the world if you have your moon in Scorpio, but it, what it does do, it does give the moon quite a lot of fear because Scorpio is that is that sign of fear. It's it's the it, it represents the natural eighth house, which is to do with the hidden, the unknown secrecy, sudden changes, death, sex and transformation. It's a fascinating house, but it's not an easy house to deal with. So when you have the moon either in the eighth house um, or particularly when it's in the sign of Scorpio, this adds to that insecurity of the moon. But we know that the moon is insecure already because it's a chemodrama moon. So that, that can affect the moon. That can essentially make it feel like it's a bit cracked. It can affect the mind. So we not only have an isolated moon with four malefic uh, aspects, but two, you could argue, are relatively positive. It's also a debilitated moon as well. So this really just adds that extra layer of uh, insecurity to, um, to that moon. And one of the shadows uh, of the moon is that it is um, the moon can become obsessed when it's in Scorpio in particular, with conspiracy theories. Yeah, this is part of the shadow of Scorpio. Let me sit here. So if we think about that, think of some of the really unusual things that Donald Trump has come out with. <clears throat> the things he said, you know, his uh, obsession with... Um, Oh, that 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 chemical which just escapes my mind. The hydroxychloroquine. There we go. It's just come back. Um, even though it has been proved by medical science not to work. And in fact, can actually not it not only does it not prevent COVID-19. They say actually if it's taken at the latter stages, it could actually uh, effectively end your life earlier. But so he keeps he keeps promoting that. But think of all of the madcap uh, theories that 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 he often goes into and these conspiracy theories. And remember when he was making up stuff about Barack Obama and, you know, drawing on these spurious, very non-scientific um, arguments for things. There's been one recently with uh, where he's really gone off the deep end, where there's this there's this doctor. Um, who is basically talking about um, uh, 
COVID is, is to do with uh, sex with demons, for example, and all this kind of stuff. Very unusual. I'm going to uh, actually um, stop the video here to include the clip and then and then and then we'll ca then we'll carry on. But this is uh, a little clip which is from CNN. Now, I know a lot of people, some people are not into CNN, whatever. That's fine. But it just gives you an example of some of the things that this woman is saying. And and this is in contrast to Dr. Fauci, who, of course, is globally respected and has dealt with pandemic in, in pandemics, including the AIDS virus and all that kind of stuff like that. But I will just put this this clip in. I will cut this clip in. It lasts for um, a couple of minutes or so, just so you can see what I'm talking about. But this what I argue is the shadow expression of Scorpio, which is conspiracy theories and following things that are just based on gut and intuition or just feelings rather than fact. We're all entitled to our feelings and our intuitions, which can be true. But when we throw these things out of the window in the face of obvious truths, then it can become a problem. So watch this clip now. The president of the United States is promoting disproven and potentially harmful medical treatments for COVID-19. And I know, look, it's not new, uh, but in recent days, there's been talk among some of the president's supporters that he was now finally getting it, encouraging mask wearing. But of course, once again, he is being incredibly dangerously irresponsible. He takes no responsibility for it and clearly doesn't care if it harms anyone. Yes, the president can occasionally read remarks written by someone else on a teleprompter that makes it sound like he's being responsible, which he did again this evening. But 149,000 Americans are dead, which this self-proclaimed wartime president again did not mention in his prepared remarks that he was reading off that paper. And like a snake oil salesman, he's still promoting disproven medical treatments. It is unconscionable. And whose medical advice is the president of the US, United States now promoting? It's not Dr. Fauci, not Dr. Burks, not even Dr. Redfield from the CDC or the Surgeon General who's been actually begging people to wear masks. No, the president is now promoting a doctor whose viral video has been very popular suddenly among QAnon conspiracy theorists and COVID deniers. She's a doctor from Houston who also believes that women can be physically impregnated by witches in their dreams. It's what we call astra sex. That means this person is not really a demon or nephilim. It's just a human being that's a witch. And they abstract project and sleep with people. That's Dr. Stella Emanuel, who also has a ministry, who promises on her own YouTube page, quote, deliverance from spirit husbands and spirit wives, parentheses, incubus and succubus. End quote. Last night, the... Okay, so I'm sure you saw that clip and uh, and then you can kind of understand uh, what I mean now this this lady uh, apparently she she is a doctor everyone of course has got their their rights to their own opinions and their own freedom so I'm not going to dress up or down or give any kind of like uh, opinions uh, as such uh, on her practice that's up for people to decide but after seeing that clip I think one could argue uh one can see why perhaps people are quite worried about what the president of the United States is putting forward as bona fide science in the middle of an academic, uh, in the middle of a pandemic, when we are learning really beyond doubt kind of what works. We know what works. I mean, irrespective of um, vaccinations and all, all of that kind of stuff, basically wearing um, a face mask, when you're in public, when you're not outdoors and, you know, the wind is not blowing, when you're in shops, public transport, essentially when you're in enclosed uh, spaces, uh, etc. Um, so wearing a mask, we know, helps prevent the spread of COVID. This has now been proved, you know, around the world beyond beyond doubt. And the other one, of course, is washing hands and social distancing. Not rocket science, really. I mean, when, when we actually look at it in the round, it's not rocket science. Obviously, you know, there's going to be vaccinations and all that stuff which is going to be found. These are different arguments. But in terms of how we know how we can deal with COVID 
or you know the big C now this is this is one of one of the things so it's very very interesting that Trump has touched a little bit on wearing masks and now he's gone back to hydroxychloroquine and now he's going to this doctor you know um that 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 was in the clip so this very much really um highlights the shadow the shadow of the moon when it's debilitated in scorpio it can just make a, a person a little bit wacky um you know of course it depends on it depends on the chart if this was an aspect on its own and it wasn't aspected uh maybe by like mars um or or, or you know um you know or rahu you know or something like that it, it it wouldn't it wouldn't be so bad i mean if ketu's with the moon it's going to be aspected by rahu anyway but this aspect of mars which also rules the sign of scorpio and the moon being debilitated there it really does impair the ability to 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 have a more rational thought one becomes almost um enslaved by one's emotions because uh scorpio is one of the most emotionally intense signs and you know that's not a bad thing you know it's good to have passion it's good to have intensity but when it reaches this kind of degree and where it begins to impair one's judgment that's a problem for anyone let alone when you're president of the united states so that really kind of uh I hope really helps to illustrate why we're seeing such unusual uh, behavior. Also as well, this aspect of Mars can also um, affect uh, the thoughts in the mind and it can also um, actually affect the almost like the erotic thoughts of the mind, which will also uh, race quite a lot and go maybe to some quite dark places. I don't want to make, you know, um, unfair associations but let's just say that there's a lot more going on with that moon especially uh when it comes to uh the the, the thoughts in one's mind in the realm of sex shall we say um and i'm going to go into that uh, in more detail in the fourth episode when we actually look at um trump's 12th house which is the house of bed pleasures and there you will see uh, Saturn, Venus and Pluto in the sign of cancer. And I'll describe what that means. But that's also more mother issues and more women issues in general. But I don't want to get too, too, too ahead of myself. So just to kind of wrap up, um, people might be wondering, well, how on earth did this guy become president? Yeah. Well, there are many factors. I mean, of course, we can look at that 10th house, which is very strong. But what we need to understand is that the fourth house is an angle. It's the first angle of the chart. And the angles, well, actually it's the second, because the angles are one, four, seven, and ten. Yeah? Any planet that's in an angle is, is going to have some kind of strength to it. Not only that, the moon is um, very strong in the fourth house. It actually gets directional strength in the fourth house because the fourth house is relative to the fourth sign of cancer, which is what the moon rules. So this moon here, although it's debilitated, it is actually quite powerful. Now, what is also really important is that the fourth house also refers to homeland. Yeah, the homeland that we're in. So there is this aspect, and you often see this with, with politicians. Politicians often have quite a strong fourth house. It gives one the ability to essentially have some kind of command over, over the land, particularly when it's either the moon or the sun. Because these, of course, are the chief kind of luminaries. But the moon in particular gains a lot of strength when it's in the fourth house. So although... The Trump's relationship with his mother was awful, as as Mary as Mary Trump described, um, and unfortunately, sadly, and this is why I say Trump's tragic moon, because there's a good chance that maybe his mother didn't didn't either want him or love him, and he may know this, and I think this has contributed to a lot. They say that even the suspicion that 
that you may not be loved by your mother is enough to cause mental problems. And it seems to be, uh, according to Mary Trump, pretty much on the record. Trump's mother really didn't like him very much. So there is that aspect. However, the moon being in the fourth, it does give it that power and it does give a person quite a lot of desire. Uh, and particularly uh, when it comes to things like politics. And as we see here, the moon is being the moon is also full because it is opposite the sun. So that gives the moon some strength. Um, and it's also connecting sun and moon with that 10th house of career, which is the most powerful angle. So you can see here he's got this what we call that that fourth house, 10th house axis. It's on an eclipse, which is very, very dramatic. So it may not be great for his home life, but being aspect, aspected by the sun from a very powerful house, um, it is giving that potential, that strength that he has uh, in his career. But also the most obvious thing as well, the fourth house also relates to what? Real estate, homes. How did, you know, how did Trump come to prominence? And one of the things that he's known for, real estate. Yeah. So we can see how that moon, although it is very tragic, it really is a tragic moon because it's affecting Trump's mind so much. And because he is, you know, he is the president of the United States, States his, his mental um, state of mind is now affecting the whole nation and by extension the world, but in America in particular. And before I wrap up and close, there's one thing that really needs to be understood. The leader's chart of any nation, any leader that leads a nation, their chart becomes intertwined with that of the nations and the nation starts to live out that karma of that chart. Yeah. So. For as long as Trump is in power, it really is probably going to get more and more and more unusual because Trump himself has a very unusual chart. And this is why it is critical that when people come to vote, who they pick, because the leader will affect the fate of the nation. So um, I hope that was a, a good explanation of um, of not only Trump's chart, but also his state of mind. The next episode is going to be um, about Trump's uh, personality, his first house and his finances. That one I'm calling uh, Trump uh, shaman to shambles. Um, how Trump may not have as much money as he seems. Yes, I'll go into explanation of why that is, but he may not have as much money as he seems. If anyone would like to have a, a consultation with me, then of course, please visit my website, which is the archetypalblueprint.com. I also do personal um, consultations around love, money, fate, destiny, uh, business. So if you'd like to have your chart looked at and, you know, have me uh, give you a consultation, and help uh, guide and direct your life, uh, feel free to get in touch. All of the information will be uh, in the description section below. Um, and if you've liked that, uh, liked what I said, please uh, click like and uh, subscribe and share with others. But there we are. Installment number one in Trump, about Trump, Trump's tragic moon, tantrums and mummy issues. Oh, and I forgot to say that as well. The... Um, this can also affect the temper, even as, a, even as an adult, when you see the moon, Ketu with the moon, it can cause temper tantrums. And again, that's something else that Trump is now well known for, you know, dismissing people at the last minute, all sorts. Anyway, I have said my bit, so I hope you've enjoyed that video. And uh, yeah, please don't forget to like and subscribe and get in touch if you'd love to have a consultation with me. Cheers. Thanks so much.